Welcome to the lecture for Math 1325 for Section 9.7 using derivative formulas. Today we're going to look at all the shortcuts or rules that we've learned so far for solving derivatives. And then we're going to look at problems um, where those rules are combined in different um, combinations, which make them a little bit more complex. They may look a little scary on the front end. They will take some more paper, some scratch paper, the importance in using these combination of rules is taking your time and, and paying a lot of attention to detail. So let's first review the rules that we've learned so far. The first rule that we learned was the power rule. This is when we have a function that's a variable raised to a power. The simplest, to take the derivative of that, excuse me, we bring the power down in front, the exponent down in front is a multiplier, and then the new exponent is simply one less, so we subtract one from the exponent. For example, x cubed, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The exponent comes down in front as a multiplier, and the new exponent is one less. The second rule we learned was the sum and difference rule. And this is when a function is actually made up of a sum of two other functions or a difference of two other functions. A perfect example of this are polynomials, as you can see over here to the right. What we do then is we can take the derivative of each piece and then add or subtract them, whatever's happening in the original function. And that's what you see here. So in our example here, we have x cubed minus x squared. We have two functions, x cubed and x squared. We take the derivative of each. We already saw this derivative, 3x squared. The derivative of x squared is um, 2x, right? We bring the 2 down in front, and the new exponent is simply a 1, which we don't write. And then we do the same operation in the derivative as we had in the original function. So our derivative of f of x in this example is 3x squared minus 2x. For the product rule, remember that when we have a function that is a product of two other functions, the way we do this, this is a little more involved now. So the derivative equals the derivative of the first function times the second function. Not the derivative, just the function, the part that's here. Plus the derivative of the second factor times simply the first function. Okay, we'll see some examples later with this. The quotient rule, this one's a little more involved, and I've used a simpler formula here than your book uses. I'm using n to represent the numerator and d to represent the denominator, so it, it keeps it a little bit, I think, clearer in our mind over here. So the derivative, when we have a function that's a quotient or the division or a fraction of two other functions, we have the derivative equals the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. All of these formulas and rules you need to remember. Now remember when we have a function, in this case we have uppercase f of x is equal to f of g of x, so uppercase f of x is simply a composite function of g on f. So remember what we're doing here is in order to find the derivative we're taking the derivative of the outer times the derivative of the inner. Those words are better than this because it's not quite as clear. So notice here we have an example when we have the inner function is x cubed plus 1. The outer function is a function raised to the power of 4 or simply a power function. So the outer function is the parentheses to, to the power of 4. That exponent comes down as a multiplier. The inside doesn't change. x cubed plus 1. The exponent becomes 1 less as we knew in the power rule. And then we simply take the derivative of the inner. What is the inner? Everything inside the parentheses, x cubed plus 1. The derivative of x cubed we saw earlier was 3x squared. And the derivative of any constant is 0, so we don't have to put plus 0 here. And so we have this. We would clean it up a little bit, mainly by multiplying the 4 times the 3x squared. All right, so that's a quick review. The only rule that I don't see in here is the constant. Um, the derivative of a constant equals 0. And the derivative of a constant times a function is equal to that constant times the derivative of the function, meaning we can pull the constant out and multiply at the end. All right, so now let's look at some of these combinations and see some examples how these work. So here we have x squared 
over the quantity of x minus 1 and this entire quotient raised to the fifth power. Notice this is a composite function, which we'll need to use the chain rule for, but the inner function now is a quotient. Before we've just had power in the inner, now we have a quotient in the inner. So we can take the outer derivative pretty simply, but now when we're doing the inner function, notice we're going to have to use the quotient rule. If you want, this would be a good place to pause and try it on your own. I highly recommend that, and then start it again when you're done and see how you did. Again, here's our uh, formula for a quotient rule for the inner. So again, remember the outer times the inner. So the outer is simply pull that exponent down in front, 5, and the new exponent is 4, and the inside doesn't change. So the outer is pretty simple, just a simple power rule. Now the inner, we have to do the quotient rule, and, and if, you, if you're still uncomfortable with these, this is good that you're doing it, because you need to be practicing these. Even though they're more complicated and have more steps, you need that practice for the test that's coming soon. So remember we have the numerator, the derivative of the numerator times the denominator. The derivative of the numerator is 2x, the denominator is x minus 1. So that's the first piece, derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. The numerator is x squared times the derivative of the denominator, which is simply 1. What you see here, the numerator x squared times the derivative of the denominator, which is just 1, all over the denominator squared. Now we're going to do some things to clean this up. We're going to multiply 2x squared times x minus 1, and when you do all that cleanup, you're going to get this, okay? Notice here we have, um, you have uh, x to the squared raised to the fourth power, which would give you x to the eighth over x minus 1 to the fourth times another x minus 1 squared, which will give us x minus 1 to the sixth. We have 5x to the eighth and then times the rest of this. And, and this is what you'll get when you simplify it. So I'm not going to walk through those steps. That's mainly algebra. So I'm going to trust that you can get from here to here. Let's look at another problem. Oh, wow. I did not want that all to come out. I'm not sure why that did. Sorry here, guys. So we have, an, we have another problem here where we have um, another quotient rule. But it's kind of the opposite. Now we have a quotient um, with two powers. So notice the numerator's derivative is a composite, and the denominator's derivative is a composite. So this gets a, this is probably one of the most complicated. Okay, so let's look at this and go step by step. And again, I apologize that it didn't build out. So if you want, write this problem before you look down here and see if you can solve it, and then come back to the slide. So the derivative of the numerator is outer and inner. So the derivative of the outer is, again, bring that exponent down in front, 2 times x minus 1 to the power of 1. We see that right there. The derivative of the inner is just 1. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 1 is 0. So this is the derivative of the numerator here using the composite rule or the chain rule times the denominator, x to the fourth plus 3 cubed. So that's the whole first piece here, the whole first term. Now we're going to subtract the numerator, x minus 1 squared, which you see there, times the derivative of the denominator. Again, we have another chain rule. The 3 comes down in front, x to the 4th plus 3 stays the same, and the exponent becomes 1 less. As you can see there, 3 moves to 2. And then we look for the derivative of the inner, which is simply 4x cubed, right? We have a simple power rule, and the derivative of 3 is 0. So we have all of this all over the denominator squared. Remember, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponent. So x to the fourth plus 3 cubed squared is going to give us x to the fourth plus 3 to the sixth. Now, it looks really messy up here. And these are actually a little bit easier to simplify. Because they're so messy, we're not going to do a bunch down here. We're just going to clean up a little bit. We're going to try to multiply single terms out here. Anything that's got an exponent on a parenthesis, we're just going to leave. And so this is a fine answer for that problem. Okay? You might have multiplied the 2 and the x minus 1, but this would certainly be a sufficient answer for the test. <clears throat>
Let's look at another one. Here we have a product with a power. Okay, so notice that f of x is now a product of two functions. We have a function in parentheses here, and then we have a function under a radical here. Remember that we typically turn radicals into exponentials when solving them to make them easier um, to find the derivatives, because we can use the power rule. In this case, we'll use the power and the chain rule. So now we have a product with a composite function only in the second factor, since the, since the power on this first um, factor is 1. It is not considered a composite function and we don't need to use the chain rule on it. We can just find the derivative of the what's inside the parentheses. So remember our product rule which is um, the derivative of the second factor times the first plus the derivative of the first times the second. Alright, so let's look at this. <clears throat> so we have the first function times the derivative of the second. Remember this is now um, 3 minus x squared raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so the 1 half power comes down in front, the inside stays the same, and then the exponent becomes 1 less. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Okay, then we have that's the outer function. The inner function is um, the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and it's minus, so we get minus 2x. That is that whole first factor, uv prime, plus the derivative of the first factor, x squared minus 1, which is simply 2x, times the entire second factor, which we have here. So now we're just going to clean it up. We're going to multiply things through. We can see we have a negative exponent, which means this term goes in the denominator. Um, so we're just going to clean this up a little bit. And we also remember that a exponent of one half or any fraction exponent, the denominator is the root. So we're going to put it back in root form because that's how it was given. And, and then we're just going to clean it up a little bit more. Not a big deal, but you should be able to move through this algebra pretty simply. This looks a little complicated, but if you start moving things where they belong, like to the denominator, 1 over 2, you can see the 2 is in the denominator. This 2 is in the numerator, which we see there, and then we can start canceling out, etc. It's not as complicated as it seems, but it's, it, is simp it is easy to make simple mistakes by not paying attention to detail. So use a lot of paper, take your time, try to be as neat as possible so you don't miss any terms, and kind of check your work, kind of go through it maybe a couple times. Derivative of this times that plus the derivative of that times that, etc.